Hey, so here we are for new year, so it's time to build a new world. Um, today I'm gonna to delve into what I'm calling the Presley process, which is to say what I use for world building. Uh, if you've read my book, you know that I think that you should have all the tools in the toolbox and then figure out how to do it yourself. But uh, some folks have asked in the comments for me to kind of break down my process, which I do get into in my second book. Um, but so that's what we're gonna do here. Um, most weeks I focus on one aspect of it, uh, but today I'm just gonna look at the overall process. Uh, the Presley process because alliteration is awesome. Uh, so before we do, a little housekeeping. I've been on hiatus for the last few months and it was Corona uh, related, not that I had it. I'm all boosted up and you know that kind of thing. But um, we moved into this house and I got to build this wonderful office. And then two months later, that's when uh, lockdowns happened. So my wife, uh, you know, she took over the office during the days and I would use it at night. And eventually you know, we'd switch out every day and uh, at five and eventually I got sick of that. So I just set up in the office in the in the garage and it was terrible, but I stuck it out there for a long time. And eventually I just got tired of switching out and coming back in here to film these videos. And um, so new year, my wife was supposed to uh, start back at work full time at the her office. And of course, the night before uh, they locked us down again. So twist uh, she is now in the garage and I am here so I'm gonna take advantage of this while I can and try to keep up the videos because if you you know it's writing a thought is if you wait till everything is perfect then you're never gonna get anything done um, second bit of housekeeping uh, I am re-releasing my uh, the Flintlock Fantasy Reimagining of the uh, Civil War. Uh, I had three books out of a four book series and uh, they never quite took off and things kept happening like major illness, child, Corona, you know, so that type of thing. So I have uh, pulled them back and am going to be re-releasing them probably in March. All four of them back, back, back. Um, I mention this because I'm going to start a new series here on the YouTube channel where I am breaking down the world building that I did since this was my introduction to world building and it is this very, very massive world. And I'm going to be looking at how I took it from fantasy conceit top down to granular details like the language that the Dobra use. Um, very, you know, um, anyways, soup to nuts, top to bottom, uh, hopefully a weekly thing. I think I've got 10 uh, ideas for it already. So anyways, look for that if you're interested. So with that in mind, let us start with the process itself. Um, if you were to, the Presley process, which I still think is hilarious, um, if I were to break it down, um, you know, there's 300 and something pages of world building notes and then another couple hundred pages in the second book. Um, but if I were to break it down to two important factors, it would be first building up and building out and second fantasy functions. Uh, these are the two most important things in my uh, estimation. And if you have those, then you can build a world pretty easily. Um, so we're going to look at those two things real quick. Um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 building up and building out. Let's start there. Uh, building up is, uh, well, it comes down to top down and bottom up. Uh, if you are a pantser or a planner, uh, planner being someone who uh, is top down and takes an idea and then extrapolates it and builds the world out accordingly. Uh, bottom up, on the other hand, is you write, 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 and you have all these ideas, and then midway through or sometime, you have to make sense of them and extrapolate uh, what your world is from what you already have. And now personally, I am a huge uh, top-down designer. I had my, all my ideas in place, and then I started building the world. But you shouldn't rely on any one thing. Uh, if you are a bottom-up uh, designer, you just make stuff, you're eventually gonna have to figure out the rules to your world. So I strongly recommend knowing how to do bottom-up and top-down, uh, which is building up and building out. Um, I'm a big fan of MMA and used to watch it all the time. And it's kind of like that and that you can, um, originally people came from uh, you know, three uh, disciplines of either striking, grappling, or jujitsu. And uh, you could be really, really good at one thing and still win, especially in the early days. But eventually, you know, you couldn't just rely on that one thing. If you were a great striker, you needed to know wrestling so you could keep it in the striking department, you know. You couldn't uh, be weak in one category because people could use that against you. Uh, Chuck Liddell was a great striker and a great wrestler, which is why he was able to keep everyone striking with him all the time. So it's kind of the same thing. It's like even if you're a very big top-down designer or a very, you know, 100% pantser, uh, you need to know the other aspects of the game because you are going to use them no matter how much you are on one side of the spectrum, you are going to need to use the others. So with that in mind, we're going to start with uh, the building up. That's the first stage of it. 
And if you are a top-down designer, you can actually ignore this for the most part. It's good to know it, but you can just jump right into the building out, which is what I personally did. And building up is taking all those disparate ideas that you have. For instance, you've been writing and you say, oh, I have this, this, and this in the story. And then you got to figure out what that means for the world as a whole. You, uh, you know, deductively reason out your own world after the fact. Um, so to do that, uh, we use what uh, Sanderson does, calls interconnection and streamlining. I think those are in his third rule of magic. Uh, all of this, by the way, I already have vi uh, videos on, and they're hopefully linked at the bottom if I remember to do that. So that's why I take the bucket each week and I just grab stuff out. Even though I'm a uh, top-down, you know, building out 100%er, I take these disparate ideas that I randomly draw each week and then do the building up um, phase of this. This keeps me you know, strong in my world building and it's just kind of fun. And when we get these disparate ideas, uh, we organize them based on the fantasy conceits. Uh, fantasy conceit is a large part of the fantasy function, which is the next stage in this. And um, fantasy conceits go in a, uh, there's six different major types of them, geography, biology, physics slash magic, metaphysics, technology, and culture. And they all kind of organize in those you know, big buckets. And so they can use the fantasy functions to uh, organize these ideas so then you can look at them. And then in the building up phase, um, or do it uh, in South Park. There's a wonderful documentary about it. Uh, it's something about six days, six days to air, something like that. Anyways, uh, they talk about their method of taking all their plot points and taking the and. Well, this happens, and then this happens, and this happens, and they take all the ands and place them with buts or therefores. So, this is happening because of this kind of thing, but this happens to get in the way, or therefore because of this, then this, and that's the interconnection and streamlining part of the world building, where you take these ideas and then uh, see how they all work together. That's the building up phase. I uh, use what's called antecedents, and that is like, well, if magic exists, what's the cause of magic? What needs to exist so that magic can exist? And it, you might have to introduce a, a new type of, of physics that works, or because of magnets, or something like that. But if it's magnets, then you're gonna look at the geography to see how that affects it, or perhaps a god created it, you know, magic, then well, we should probably figure out who the gods are and why they created it, and that kind of thing. So that's antecedents. Uh, once all that is done, then we start our building out phase uh, with fantasy functions where we have everything and how it works together. And then you take analog cultures, which are cultures that we use for inspiration from the real world, plug them into the functions and they spit out new details. Um, all this is kind of important because, well not important, but interchangeable because while you're in the building out phase, you might come up with a new detail that will pop you right back to the building up phase to see how that new detail works together, which is again why I think you should know building up and building out. So let us try to uh, do this together. And I left my uh, bucket over there, so excuse me a second. Ah. Ah. So, oh, look at that, I haven't used this since October probably, since we actually used it as a Halloween bucket. Has it been that long? All right, so we're gonna grab three ideas from the trick-or-treat bucket that was actually used for trick-or-treat at one point, and then go through this process real quick. I'm gonna, usually I put it on you know, speed views so you don't have to watch all this, but I'm gonna talk you through it this time. And our new ideas are giants, birds, why birds, and ghosts. All right, one more for good measure. Fire, well, that is, I think, probably from something else. Nope, not two moons, I still can't do two moons. All right, so giants, birds, and I have giants and ghosts. The ghost is what it says, or it might be giants twice. Anyways, ghosts, giants, and birds. All right, oh, I need something magical. One more. You can see how well did I get you? I just got birds again. Something's up with this. I think these are all my discards that just got put back in here at some point. Spirit worship. Now oh, that goes with the ghosts. All right. <sighs> I wanted something more magical, but you take what you get. All right. So I now have these four things. Ghosts, birds, giants, and spirit worship. And I am going to put them in their, um, 
and their uh, fantasy functions, because these are uh, fantasy functions which are how the world deviates from reality. Um, that is what makes it fantasy because it's the impossible happening. So I will put them into their sections. Uh, giants is going to be in biology because you now have larger things than normal. Birds, which I don't know how to um, play with it yet, but I will probably streamline those two together and uh, interconnect them so that it's giant birds. So we might just do something with megafauna, uh, which is to say a very large fauna, say giant birds. Uh, ghosts which will be metaphysical. Metaphysical is different than religion, uh, which is about to find out because uh, religion is how culture uh, thinks about the world itself. That falls into the cultural, which is spirit worship, which will fall into uh, culture. So I will put those into their, uh, their four categories. Actually, there's gonna be three categories because giants and birds are both biological. Then we have spirit worship, which is metaphysical, and then uh, ghosts which, sorry, ghost is metaphysical, spirit worship is cultural. Um, so now I'm going to be looking at those real quick. Uh, I will do the creative process in a second and report back, but giants and birds, like I said, I just interconnected those to uh, say it's gonna be giant fauna with very large birds. If we have very large birds, we start looking at antecedents, uh, like what caused them, is it just, you know, they're in, you know, basically the Jurassic period, you know, there is very large, Creatures, are there other creatures? These raise other questions. Uh, are there other megafauna or is it just giant birds? Are the giant birds natural? Have they been here for forever? Has human evolution evolved and society and stuff evolved around the birds or did they invade? Um, there is how magic uh, interacts with the world is could be it's always been there, it has invaded or the person has invaded the magical world like uh, portal fantasy at this is Mendelssohn's theories, I think. Anyways, I'm getting off topic. So streamline together, I'm going to have giant birds. I'm going to think about how they, um, how they will affect culture or are they new, are they natural, that kind of thing. And my second book has a lot of, uh, of prompts to look at that kind of stuff. So I'm going to go through that in just a second. Second of all, the other two can easily be interconnected and that is ghosts. So ghosts exist, that means that there is a soul. There, that means that there, that's the antecedent, is there's probably a soul. That means that there is some part of the human essence that is um, inviolable, inviolable? No, uh, whatever, it can't be broken down. Um, uh, so you know, we're going to have to have a lot of questions about that. How long do the spirits exist? Um, are there spirits around before? Uh, life, you know, that kind of thing. Are we talking a reincarnation where they're a ghost for a while? Is ghost just part of the biological, you know, like you're, born, like you're a ghost, you know, you go through a metamorphosis where you live in flesh for a while and then you become a ghost again. Like, let's, you know, think about that kind of thing, which is kind of interesting. Um, uh, so then culturally, we're going to see spirit worship, uh, which are the people and how they probably interact with the ghosts, um, which is going to be kind of cool now I think about it. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm going to look at, so I'm streamlining those and then I'm going to see how they play into each other. You know, perhaps the birds, the giant birds have something to do with ghosts or perhaps not, but obviously the ghosts and the spirit worship are going to play together and the ghosts, I mean, sorry, the giants and the birds. Uh, so with that in mind, I'm going to do some fast forwarding as I brainstorm and I will see you back in a few minutes. All right, so we're a few minutes later, five, I think, 10, let's say 10. And I am trying to figure out how I can show you the process real quick um, while also staying mic'd because as someone pointed out, my sound is terrible. So um, this is all the kind of professionalism I'm sure you've come to expect from me. And uh, here we go, uh, some things to uh, think about. So like I said, I broke it down into their three categories. Usually I color code them, but I forgot to at first. Biological, giants, and birds, uh, you know, that led to the question, are they new, are they novel, you know, are they native, et cetera, et cetera. Um, then I had metaphysics and culture. As I said earlier, uh, this is part of the building up. Um, I thought it'd be fun to do as a life cycle, as in people and all living things are a part of a reincarnation cycle. And we're going to say that it was, it goes from spirits to humans, to ghosts, back to spirits. And the idea is that, um, uh, you know, spirits exist, they're the uh, 
entities that will become human. Uh, it's kind of like my series of breath and uh, my novels that are going to be coming out. But um, the idea of that is that, you know, it's a spirit and all living things have a spirit in them. And after a while, the spirit kind of gets bored and becomes a human or a bird or, you know, a tree or that kind of thing. And then it lives out its natural life as that and it becomes a ghost. A ghost in this metaphor metamorphosis cycle uh, has all the memories of, uh, of a living entity. But as time goes on, and we're going to say twice the lifespan of a normal entity, uh, its memories degrade. So until it loses all memory of what it was like as a living entity, at which point it is now a spirit, it gets bored and goes back into, you know, becomes so, you know, a living thing again. So that's the cycle that goes on and on. And um, it's kind of making a magic system out of it because you need some more magic. Well, anyways, so we have a ghost, spirit, metamorphosis, life cycle. Um, which, of course, as I said, would lead to uh, spirit worship and the idea that humans uh, can interact with the spirits themselves. I'm sorry, with the ghosts, because the spirits, you know, have lost all memory of them, you know, that kind of thing. So they keep in contact with the ghosts, um, and because we need some magic in this, um, and the idea that um, the ghosts can lend their essence to uh, their worshipers. Uh, so if I have a ghost with me, I can communicate. I'm talking to the ghost of my grandfather. I say, hey, teach me that silversmithing technique that, um, you know, really enhance my silversmithing technique because my grandfather made silver, silversmithing. I have picked it up. Uh, he would come and kind of inhabit my body and I would have, you know, extra power. Uh, I could, you know, gain strength and stuff like that too because obviously you, know, you need that in fantasy world. Um, but the uh, limitations that we, uh, because all magic systems, all good magic systems have limitations, um, it would be that it burns out the ghost twice as fast. So every time they enhance a human or that kind of thing, they turns them to spirits a lot faster. Anyways, so as we see, we had uh, we went from ghosts, and that's becoming our prime mover, and that whole spirit life cycle to spirit worship. All right, makes sense. Then I broke that down into well, there's probably two factions or philosophies for this, um, and one that believes it's all part of the natural order. It is our job to keep the the ghosts happy and the spirits happy and that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, we can still talk to our dead relatives and that awesome, you know, let's, let's, let's keep their, their knowledge alive as long as we can. And then the second faction, which is, says, let's enslave them. Uh, if we can have their powers, like we can force them, somehow force them to give us their powers. Sure, it, it burns them out faster, but who cares? They're here, like, we're the living. It's their job to serve us. So, um, anyways, uh, I just got a text asking for, if I needed a realtor. Anyways, um, so that idea of this kind of heretical, you know, um, you know, we're enslaving the ghosts, uh, we're going to say, we're going to take that and this is our but and therefore, um, since we know that the spirits can, um, you know, are not just for humans, but we can also say bird spirits, let's say, uh, the cycle has been disrupted. Uh, that's what I came to here. Animal spirits also have it. And so something's wrong as such. That's why we're having giant birds. We've got all the way back to our biological life. You would have thought you'd start with biological, but no. We started with metaphysics, moved to culture, and the culture then brought us that. So we're gonna say in this world, and we're gonna talk about the analog culture in a second, um, all of a sudden the birds have gone giant and are now hunting humans. And I, what's going on with that? Um, so yes, we started with, like, we didn't start with metaphysical conceit. We started with, I think giants was the first thing I pulled out, and then birds. Um, but we've been able to interconnect and streamline everything so that it all comes together. So, um, so the spirit worship, the metamorphosis cycle, it all makes sense and cause the biological thing. Um, because I like the idea of giant birds, it made me think of uh, Native American stories about the Thunderbird. And so that's what's inspiring the analog culture for this. Um, and then, because I, I also kind of want to do something Mongolian, I was saying in my head as I was doing this with giant birds, like a plains, that would be the worst place in the world for giant birds to come after you. Um, so we're kind of an inciting incident of the story uh, where all of a sudden giant birds have appeared and they're hunting us. And because the story is always influenced by the world, then that means we're going to have to discover why this is happening. E.g. they're going to have to backtrack to find out who it was that has been enslaving the spirits, which is what has caused the birds to kind of cannibalize their own ghosts to become huge and giant and are hunting the humans. Alright, so 
that's the building up for a process. I now have you know figured out how all these things interconnect. Um, I know now all my uh, fantasy functions. I have a prime mover, which is to say the one that has to be that all the others are built upon. Uh, so with all that in mind, now I would start the building out process. Sorry, building out process. So I have all this stuff, and I even have an analog culture of Native Americans. Um, I don't really have a huge amount of time to get into it, so I'm going to just go and kind of um, what I would do in this phase. And the first thing I would do is research. You don't want to have generic Native American, like, you know, there are a whole bunch of different tribes, different, you know, different languages, different belief systems, that kind of thing. So I would immediately start to research that, find one that really uh, is pretty great. I'm also working on my. Um, my book series uh, uh, I was just going through last night. I have a whole bunch. I have multiple Native American analog uh, creation myths, and so that's probably why it was on my mind. Now that I think about it. Um, anyways, um, so yes, I would go research and I would find a specific tribe and read up as much as possible, or, or you know, a people you know, and learn as much about them as possible. Uh, with that in mind, I would then look for. Um, uh, toehold details, which are things that would, you know, so you could understand them. Um, there were things that you, so people who are reading it know that this is a, a Native American culture that I am using, and it kind of orients them to the story, and with those constants in mind, then they could look at what is different in the world, and it wouldn't be as alienating kind of thing. So research, find all those toehold details, get to know the culture itself so that I'm not just stealing generic ideas and throwing them out there and, and you know, and anyways. Um, so with that in mind, I would also be looking at the story because obviously the inter, uh, interconnection, I'm not getting the connection, but the inciting incident is the giant Thunderbirds are now hunting us. So we got to figure this out. Uh, that would make me start looking for a protagonist, um, you know, uh, someone who has a good connection with their spirit, um, probably with a grandparent because I mentioned that earlier and I just, you know, would use that. So it's someone who, you know, I'm, you know, probably very young. Actually, let's do it really old. We've never had an old protagonist in any of these things. You know, someone who's 60 plus, whose parent is their, or grandparent is their spirit guardian or their ghost guardian, but is getting on the edge of becoming a spirit. Um, the, all of a sudden the Thunderbirds have, have started attacking and this character needs to now go on a quest to figure out what it is, why they're doing this, and um, at the same time their very good connection with their grandparent is waning, so it's kind of a second death to them, and anytime they need to use the power of their grandparent, and especially they're going to need to because they're frail and elderly, then um, you know, then it's just going to be taking away their moments, and uh, so now we have a limitation, we have a cost that's all built into it, and we can make a pretty good story from that. Um, so after the research, I would have all sorts of these details. Um, I would be looking at you know their spirit worship. Um, you know, a lot of them have like old crow and that kind of thing as a spirit. That's just a generic. I'm just throwing that out there. But you know, so I would look at specifically how they worshipped, since this is one of our fantasy conceits, um, and not just the mythology, but what they did, um, like the rituals themselves, and that kind of thing. And then I would plug it into my world and my fantasy functions. I'm sorry, my fantasy conceits and new output details would come. So um, if I remember from my Boy Scouts way, way back, uh, like the Hopi Indians, you know, you've seen all of their um, big, uh, the rituals where they have the big kind of square things and they do their dances and, you know, um, definitely look into that kind of thing because that is a, a detail, um, a toehold detail. And I would then start to see how I could use that for the world. Um, and you know, you know, so perhaps they do the spirit, maybe they commune with the spirits, I'm sorry, with the ghosts through uh, the rituals such as these or the spirits or they call them into themselves and the, the rituals themselves would become Toho details and things that I could use to, to make this story, to make this world, to make it feel uh, real and authentic. And with that, then I would start building out. I would come up with a history. Uh, the, as I say in my second book, you know, you look at, uh, and I have a, um, uh, what do you call them? 
template. I have a template that you can get on my website, uh, link below maybe, um, that you can download to build your own Bible. And part of that is like, what is the, uh, the ancient history, as in where did the world come from, that kind of thing when building, is, building out. Uh, then what is the recent history, what has happened in the last two years, the last 10 years, uh, that starts you off at the story itself. Um, so, you know, let's say that there has been um, a battle for secession uh, within the tribe itself, and there are two, oh man, see, say we're building the world right now. Um, you know, there are two uh, uh, sisters who are, because uh, it's gonna be, say it's matriarchal, uh, two sisters that are vying for, um, you know, the, 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 not the throne, because it's not quite that, but for the, the, the uh, position of, of chieftain. And uh, they come from the two different philosophies, one to keep everything normal, and the other one is, you know, let's use the spirits for our own. Uh, now we have, you know, part of the story is built in, uh, and then that, that we're gonna uncover as the protagonist searches, you know, to why the Thunderbirds are there. So this is a very, very brief building out um, after I've built up. So I now have the, the world that's building up and how it interconnects together. And then with that, I start plugging in e-details into that understanding and new details pop out. Um, but at the same time, uh, then I can take those details and then go back to the building up phase and put them back in. So if I was doing this and like, oh, you know, I, because of the inspiration of Native American, let's say, you know, the rain dance, because I'm just grabbing generic things at this point, I would definitely go into this in much more detail if I was building this out um, for real, as I was gonna write in this world itself. But let's say the rain dance, like, oh, I wanna bring in weather control. All right, well, that might make a whole new fantasy conceit since now I am, you know, before I had just had biology and spirits and the spirits affecting the biology to make them larger, but if I'm controlling the, uh, the, the weather, then that might be a whole new magical conceit. So I might have to add that to my, my list and then build up all over again uh, with incorporating that new detail so that I can incorporate that into the story. So yeah, there we go. Um, it's all interconnected, uh, building up first step, uh, and that is identifying your fantasy conceits and then seeing how they work together. Once you have them all work together, then it becomes building out, which is using your fantasy functions, and that is taking your analog culture and all the details that you want and then plugging them back into your fantasy conceits to see what output details you have. And yeah, I think that might be it for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you can use the Presley process, which is a, uh, work, a title uh, that is not decided upon yet, but we're gonna call it that. And I hope you can use it to build some better worlds.